All right. Um, welcome, everybody, to the June Tableau Prep user group. Happy to have you guys here with us. Um, today, we've got some cool sessions coming up from Tora and Wilf. Uh, we um, you know, excited to see what they've got to share with us. And uh, you know, we've also got a couple of things real quick to share, um, just Tableau Prep related. So I can get my, there we go. Uh, Jack, Jenny, and myself lead the Prep user group. Um, and since this one today is more favorable to the Americas time zone, uh, that's why I'm hosting today. Uh, if you want to present, you got some interesting use cases, tips and tricks, uh, feel free to sign up, send us uh, your session proposal, and we will we would love to have you share how you are using prep. We've also got our, our Slack channel, Prep Playground, where you can just stay in touch with folks. Uh, if you've got need help with something, there's also a few channels in there with uh, where the devs are are in as well so it's a good good place to chat and also get some help when you need it um we uh from tableau conference there was a couple of exciting things that were announced for prep coming up sentiment analysis being one of them and then the einstein copilot being another um, and we've seen a couple of things with Einstein Copilot. You know, we've seen, uh, I think it was teased a little bit at uh, TC23, although back then it was it looked a little bit different. Um, and so this these updates to it, the changes, uh, being able to see that in practice um, should be exciting as well. So uh, looking forward to seeing how, how those get used. And actually the sentiment analysis as well. I'm curious to see what that looks like, how it actually plays with the data, and how much you have to configure it and fine tune it to get the results you're looking for. 2024.2 uh, is coming pretty soon, so we'll get to see that co-pilot. And then also some more custom schedules for prep conductor. Um, I know it's something that I've had some frustrations with in the past of really kind of being limited to those, you know, one hour, two hour refreshes, you can't really fine tune the timing of those. So it'll be good to be able to adjust those a little bit. And then also writing to S3 buckets. Um, that'll also be helpful, maybe giving you an extra way to set up your pipeline um, and continue to use prep to help move your data where you really need it. And so uh, now we've got um, our speakers coming up. And so uh, I will hand the floor over to Tora. Thank you. Uh, so that there were some questions also um, uh, about recordings, if it will be available. And uh, you can answer yes. that. Yes, we will. The recording will be available shortly after the session is over. Yeah, and then there was questions also about um, pay, have to pay extra for Einstein Copilot with the new Tableau Plus thing. Yes, and, uh, that is my yes, understanding from, um, I think originally it was, yes, Tableau Pulse. Um, I think now we can kind of see the, the, the way things are moving. It will probably be either Tableau Pulse or Tableau Plus um, that will be required to use that Einstein Copilot. Yeah, and, and also seen seen some of that, but I haven't seen any pricing or anything. But it yeah, is, that's what I was going like to say. Looks like it's a bundle thing, and uh, you need to be on cloud, and uh, obviously, okay. but um, yeah, nothing yeah. is free in this world anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll start by sharing my screen. Have I managed to put get it up there? Okay. Um, Feel free to uh, to use the chat uh, if you have any questions um, during uh, the presentation, and uh, I'll try to answer as we go along. Um, there we go. My name is Tore Levensen. I'm from uh, Bergen, Norway, so on the west coast of Norway. Uh, changed my job two and a half years ago, could pick my own title, so my title is the Tableau Jedi. 
that's uh, that's the benefit of switching jobs i guess um i've been working uh with tableau or on tableau for um uh, since version 7 uh so that's uh, 12 years ago um i've done a lot of training trained th over three and a half thousand people in 16 countries so far on tableau uh, desktop prep uh, etc i'm a user group leader for for norway tableau user group and there's a new international virtual user group that I'm going to be co-leading that will kick off uh, after summer. Um, uh, we haven't uh, done the, the introductions or, the, or the, uh, the, the whole thing yet, but I can give a hint that it has something to do with maps. I'm also a Tableau ambassador for, the, for three years running. This one. Uh, you've probably seen it then, so we'll skip that. So the, the what I'm going to do today, I'm going to kind of a first high level introduction uh, to um, to Tableau Prep uh, because I had some discussions with the three J's that are running this group uh, because people who attend here are both people who are um, uh, very experienced in prep or people who are interested in prep so knowing what prep actually is um, will be the, the the first bit and then i'm going to switch over to prep uh, and work on some eurovision data uh, and try to figure out why or is it true that norway is the country with the most um, last places in the history of eurovision I can't really believe that's true, but let's have some look at, at the data uh, to, to prove this. So the the whole idea of Tableau, you probably know, is to see and understand data, and the Tableau Prep Builder is part of this. We see that this is on the connect and analyze part of um, of the process, so we connect to whatever data sources we need. There's some stuff you can do it in prep that you can't do in desktop, or a lot of things, obviously, but there's a couple of things, uh, like uh, uh, until now, at least, in the future, Tableau has announced that you can also start joining and creating a relationship between published data sources. Uh, you can't do that on desktop yet, you can in the future. So that's something that you can do in prep, which is really good. Um, and then, of course, after you start building whatever um, data sets that you have, you will share them on your Tableau server or, or on the cloud, and then you will use desktop to, to uh, connect and build something. This is the, the workspace. So obviously, I'm going to go more into detail when we go into, uh, into the prep window as well. I'm going to build, build a flow. Uh, but these are the key elements that we use. It's a very clean uh, interface, very easy to, to, uh, to start with. And it's really nice with this profile pane over here to, to, to profile and uh, to profile your data to, to see what you're, what you're looking at. And then, of course, then you need to build a flow to some data, do whatever that's needed to get the, uh, the intended result. And uh, that flow can then be, be uh, published uh, locally. And you can run this flow by pressing uh, the, the start button on your uh, desktop, or you can publish the flow to a Tableau site. Uh, you still have to do that manually unless you uh, have this um, data management add-on uh, license where you can have um, prep conductor where you can then schedule as Jared mentioned uh, earlier today as well where you now also can decide when to schedule and not just follow the the built-in schedules and the end result don't necessarily need to go to uh, to a published data source on the Tableau server it could also go to to databases the ones you see on the right hand side uh, this is something that Tableau always works on to, to build, to, to expand. Uh, I remember when I started working with Tableau some 12 years ago and the connection list to, to how many um, databases Tableau could connect to was like 15, 20 uh, or something. Now it covers the entire screen when you, when you click on it. So, uh, and that's also something that Jared mentioned. If you go to that Slack space or you go to ideas on the Tableau community, if there is any connection that you you and your company or organization really need to save your data to you have to put in an idea or you have to talk with the devs and you have to push them to to add it to uh, to prep as well there's a lot of things 
a lot of steps we can do. I'm going to use uh, not all of them, but uh, several of these when I'm going to build my flow. Um, I've been talking a bit with Wilf as well, so hopefully I'm not going to steal all his tips uh, for his session. Otherwise, that would be <laughs> that would be a bit, uh, or he would be a bit annoyed at me if I took all his tips. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some, but you stay stay for the entire session today because there's a lot of cool tips that Wilf will share afterwards as well. But I'm going to go through some of these steps during this presentation. Um, I can skip this what's and what's coming because that was already shared by Jared. One thing that's, uh, that I see at a lot of clients is that they have these licenses, they have the creators, they have the explorers, and they have the viewers. What a lot of, <clears throat> sorry, what a lot of these customers and organizations don't necessarily know is that when you have a creator license, the, you have the desktop, you have a server uh, or cloud license, but you also have the prep license. Um, some customers think that, uh, oh, we have to pay extra for it, so that, that's why we don't use it, uh, or they don't even know that they have it or have access to it uh, at all. So this is something that just make sure if you have a creator license and you're allowed, of course, uh, by your, uh, your management to install and use PrEP, um, you, have, uh, you can use the same login license key or, or server login as you have um, uh, for your desktop. And then I mentioned before, um, you do have to have this prep conductor if you would like to run um, these scheduled prep flows on the server or uh, in the cloud uh, by uh, having this data management add-on. That also brings you catalog and other type of uh, uh, features and then of course this whole picture especially the the one um, the picture uh, uh, down here um, will change a bit when we uh, Tableau uh, plus is now introduced and we have Einstein and everything else uh, Tableau uh, pulse etc so uh, we need to update this for the for the future because we don't know <laughs> we don't know yet uh, all the details of what will happen so this is what I'm going to be uh, switching over to. I'm, I have some data sources. Uh, I have some uh, locations for where Eurovision has been uh, uh, held over the years. Uh, I, over the time, I've collected some data. So I have some data from 2010 to 2017 when it comes to points and countries. I have a, a simple one from 2018. Uh, I have the, the latest results in, in here. And actually, until earlier today, I didn't have the data from or from before 2010 for the scores and everything. But for you, and uh, also to prove the point of having uh, having uh, Norway uh, <laughs> being the country it is, and with the beautiful music we do uh, love to share with the with the world, um, we'll have to um, get all the data. So. I do have it. I have been cheating a bit uh, in the sense that I've connected to my data sources like this, uh, but the data is not necessarily as good as um, as expected, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so basically like real life. Um, so the first tip is now I have the locations and the different scores in here, but as I told you, I did manage to get the Eurovision data from 1957 till 2009. And I did use, uh, I'm not a coder, so I don't write in Python or anything. I use chat uh, GPT a lot, but apparently uh, he is stupid enough to not give me what I'm, I'm expecting. I give, give all the instructions where to find the data, how to, to get it, and I get this Python script and it gives me zero results. Um, because I you know, would like to try the new, the new features out there. Um, what I eventually did was to go to Tableau Public. I did find a visualization of data over time, all the um, the data from uh, from Eurovision. Downloaded this data, this workbook. And this is something you can do as well. Every time you find something that you're interested in on Tableau Public, and the author has given the opportunity to either download the data or download the um, uh, the uh, entire um, uh, entire um, workbook, download it, and then you can find the data. So 
instead of then just getting the data directly from that workbook, uh, because it was a bit unorganized for my use, I just created a new sheet, selected the um, fields that I wanted, export it into Excel, and then my tip here is to just drag and drop any data source directly into the view over here. You see that it connects automatically. It only has one table, so I'm gonna view this data. And we see that I have the countries, I have the year, and then we have the good old friend measure names and measure values coming from that export. Which is fine because we have all these steps that we can use in, in, um, in Tableau Prep and one of them is this pivot. And normally we pivot, or not normally, that depends of course on your data, but I do a lot of uh, columns to rows pivot because that's how Tableau likes the data organized in that way. But we can also click on this and change, instead of doing columns to rows, we can do rows to columns. So we're gonna um, pivot the other way as well. So I'm gonna drag in first my measure names. That's the fields, um, uh, the rows to columns. And then I'm gonna put in my measure names down here. And you see that now I have my countries, I have my years, and then I have points and rank along pane down. So obviously this is a table calculation originally in the, the underlying data source. So I'm gonna change this rank along, etc., to just be uh, rank. And then I'm good to go for, for this particular data set. Uh, there was a question, uh, can you connect to a folder so the data is updated whenever a file is added to that folder? Um, I haven't tried, uh, so I'm not sure if that actually works. Um, we could, of course, just do like this and drag in the entire Eurovision folder, see what happens. It doesn't seem to be giving me exactly. It's just now looking at uh, this Eurovision text file and there's no tables found. Um, Jared, do you have any, or, or Wilf, do you have any comments on that? There is, yeah, there is an, an option within your data sources to connect to multiple data sources within a folder, and you can use a wildcard for the file names and import them all in bulk, uh, so that if you add a new data source to that folder the next time, it'll import all of the data for you. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's more when you connect to um, to like this one. If you connect to yeah. a data source like this, you can go to tables and say union multiple tables. Yeah. So this one, uh, I do that quite a lot. So if I would have had multiple Eurovision ones, I could do Eurovision and a star, and it would take everything that starts with Eurovision or looks like something like that. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that there. Um, somebody also asked if uh, Take On Me from AHA was launched during the Eurovision. No, that's a proper song, uh, proper pop song. So that's not part of Eurovision. <laughs> um, great. So I have my data in here. I always add a clean step just to have a look at the data. Um, I think I forgot to rename it. So I'm just going to do that again. Uh, or I did undo too many times. Um, and then I, I always love to have um, organized my data in there. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's the end result that that's matter that matters anyways. But I like to have it so I I have my years, I have my countries, points, and rank. And then when I click on any of these, you get these blue highlighter of what data belongs to the different years. Or if I would like to look at Norway, we see that Norway has zero points in 1981 which is perfect. And then we look at all of these uh, and we see that, okay, I have my data for the first um, number of years, but I'm gonna connect to this data to the newest, to 2018 and also the historical scores. So let's first look at the historical scores. This is different than uh, the other one. So this also needs to do uh, pivoting, but the, the other way around, or the maybe the standard way of doing the pivot, the way Tableau likes it. And I need to do two pivots because first I need to pivot my places or the ranking like this. So if you search for anything, you can select multiple fields, hold in the shift key, just drag it in here. And then I don't have to create a new step and uh, then do a new pivot because I can click on this plus button 
to add another pivot in here. Now I just need to search for the points. Do the same thing, select all of them. Drag this one into the view. And I have my country region, I have my place, I have my pivot names, uh, which is a bit weird because I need this to be my uh, my the proper years in here. So I'm just gonna add in a clean step to make sure that I'm gonna fix this. There's multiple ways of doing this. And that's the beauty of um, both Tableau Prep and Tableau Desktop. You can do anything in, in multiple ways. If you wanna do the simple simple one, you can go to the um, split values and either do an automatic split or just a custom split. Uh, the separator will, should be a space. I'm gonna split off basically the years over here. And then I have my years that I can use and combine this with my other data. Uh, rename this to year. Uh, if you wanna be a bit more uh, fancy about it, you can create a calculated field, uh, year second version and this is maybe if you have a bit more um, uh, more advanced data so in this case if you do have um, you need to get rid of all the alpha oh sorry the all the numbers no sorry you want to keep the numbers get rid of the letters then you can use a regular e expression like this and then it will just get rid of everything uh, like you have in here maybe you would like to add in a trim as well to make sure that you don't have any spaces so if i save this one uh, you see that this one also works pretty nice so this is the cleaning of um, of uh, my um uh, historical some of my historical data the 2018 data looks quite fine but that was also the year where they started doing semi-finals in eurovision and i only would like to look at the countries that got to the finals so i'm going to right click and keep only the final data otherwise i will have the same countries multiple times and have to make sure that that um, there's no trouble when i connect these finally the news data looks pretty nice we have the different countries we can have a look at uh, norway again we have the participant and the song so we have even newer data in there to make sure that this looks uh, looks good um 2019 21 22 23 24 uh, in 2020 there was no uh, eurovision due to covid so that's not in there so now i need to combine all of these um uh, these uh, four um, uh, data sources. I can drag it up here and I'm not going to join them. I'm going to do a union because now all of them looks very similar, so, but I, so I'm going to end up with one table. So I'm going to add first a union um, like this for, for the these different steps. Normally, if I have a better time or more time, I would have changed obviously the names in here. So clean one, two, three, four. I would call them what the data source is. So this could be 2019, 24. This could be 57 to 2009, etc. I'm going to add in all of my scores to the same union. And then, if you like to play Tetris, this is where the fun fun starts because now you have all the different um sources obviously one of them has the proper name the other ones doesn't but due to time i'm going to skip that but i have um uh, i have uh, the um, rank which is called rank in two of these places it's called place and rank in another one so then i just click on the plus and then I have place over here as well. So make sure that the rank is selected and the place, and then all of these are combined into the same uh, field. Same goes for points and point. Tableau even suggests this one. So it understands that um, these should be the same one. I do have the country and country region. So apparently it was called country region in one place, put these also together. And for the rest of them, this uh, second version of a year, we don't care about this one. Uh, this one, if I look at the pivot names, we don't need this. So this could also be, uh, we could have got rid of this from before. Let's have a look at the result. Let's get rid of, first of all, the ones that I don't need because we don't need to bring them all the way to the end uh, of our data or the output. 
and we see down here now that we do have something that are limited or a lot of nulls with the stage because we did have finals from one place and the other ones uh, don't have the stages so we could either just get rid of the entire thing or change this name into finals as well so that's the easy way to get rid of nulls just rename the nulls to something but then again everything is um, um, everything is uh, final in anywhere, anyway in here, in here. So I'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of this one as well. And then we're back to what we really need, which is the years, which I'll bring to the left, and then the countries, which I bring next to it. And then I can have a look to see, for example, in 2024. These are the countries, the participant, the, I'm not sure what the RO, uh, uh, return on investment kind of thing over here. We have the song, the rank, and the points. So now we have this data. And now I would like to uh, move this one to, uh, or join this with my locations. So let's have a look at the location first. Uh, I have the years, I have the countries, and then we can see that uh, Norway has hosted the Eurovision three times, meaning that they have won three times, because if you win, you get to host the next year. We also see that the broadcaster, Norsk Rikskinkasting, or NRK, is spelled in uh, multiple ways. So that also means that in the broadcaster window, I have 45 unique broadcasters. BBC is spelled multiple ways, so we need to fix this as well. And the easy way to fix this is to go into to clean. First, I'm going to just make everything uh, uppercase. So I'll go from 45 to 38 broadcasters. I'm getting there and closer, but I still see that BBC and British broadcasting, etc., is not the same. So I also go to clean, sorry, to um, to group values, and I can do a based on either pronunciation, spelling, common characters. So you can test uh, all of them, see which one gives the best result, but not necessarily will it give the exact result. Uh, so you might need to do some some um, uh, some. Um, uh, adjustments in here. Let's just try for for pronunciation first. We see that dr and d dot r dot is now grouped together. But BBC uh, Tableau was not clever enough. But if I select BBC, I can just tick off BBC like this, and then I can scroll through the other ones to see is there anyone else that should be grouped together. Um, you should of course know your data to make sure that. Uh, you know which one you should put, put together, etc. So I'm just going to do a couple of these more and then I'm happy with the result for now. Another thing I would like to do is that I have a date. This is the day the actual uh, Eurovision final was held, but it's called, uh, or it's an ABC field. I don't now need to go into uh, create a calculation to make sure that this is converted into a date. Hopefully, Tableau is clever enough. So if I just click on the ABC, I convert it to a date. I have now a calendar over here, and I can also see that I do have a proper date into my view. Tableau also gives you recommendations on what, are, what else I can do. You can change the country to, to uh, the, the data role of country, region, etc., so that it's even easier to put it on a map when you go into, um, into Tableau. Now I need to connect these two to each other so uh, that I can see that in Sweden, in Malmö this year, there was this final and I have my, my, um, my step down here where I've done all the, um, all the results. So now I'm gonna change this results, change the name. The name is a bit limited on length, but there's always the possibility of um, also adding a description with 200 characters. So don't wait till tomorrow or the next day or the next day to give these proper names or to adding uh, adding these um, uh, descriptions because you will forget what you actually have done. And since my location is way over there, I'm just going to move it down a bit. And maybe I'm going to put all of these together. It's another tip. Just right click on these and then group them together. So we have the group in here, which will then be the results. And if you would like to reuse this results later, you can also save this entire thing as a flow on its own. But now I need to join these together. So I'm going to 
drag it over here to join. And Tableau suggests year and year, which is perfect because that's exactly what I want to join it together on. And you have this beautiful Venn diagram, so you can decide if you want to do a left join, inner join, whatever type of join you need. In this case, I would like to have an inner join. And then you get the summary of the results. We see that there is one that is excluded, and that's 1956. And why is that? Well, in 1956, uh, I don't have the, um, uh, the results uh, from that year, uh, but I do have the location for that specific year. So I could have a look at the mismatched values or just the mismatched values for any side of these. Now I have some beautiful data adding a clean step. I always do that just to have a look. It looks like it's okay. But then again, I have year one, country one, and I have year again. Uh, the reason why I have country twice is that we have the country of the participant uh, country and we have the hosting uh, country. So we should of rename this one so we don't get confused. So this is the uh, hosting country. And if you do a lot of joins, you will end up with the same uh, field multiple times. The easiest way to get rid of them is to do minus one, which is the uh, abbreviation Tableau adds. Just get rid of it. And if you have joined multiple rows, you can also get rid of uh, multiple fields, multiple tables. You can also do minus two, minus three, et cetera. So that means I'm done with my data. I could make an output step or I can just make it simple for now. I can right click preview this in Tableau Desktop. It runs the entire flow. It goes really fast because the data is really tiny. And I think that I'm getting very close to my a lot of time now as well. So now let's have a look at the um, uh, the different countries. And um, we're going to check now uh, for uh, did this country co come in last. So I'm going to create a calculation. But first, I'm just going to add in the years. It looks like there was a bit, uh, a bit few countries in here, actually. So I think that, uh, let me just double check. That's always fun when you do these live on stage. And for some reason, there's something missing. Did I add in uh, countries, countries? All the countries are here, right? Even Norway. Yeah, uh, sorry. I did the, um, I think I just did the wrong, uh, wrong country. I renamed the, the wrong country, it looks like, because the, those are the hosts. This one, this is the one I should look at. Sorry about that. That's how it goes when you do it a bit too fast. So I do have my year and I do. I can also put in my, my rank in here. So we see this is Denmark, third, eighth, fifth. Let's have a look at Norway, um, fourth, seven, 11, et cetera. But how can I know if they came last or not? So I'm gonna put everything into one view going to put the rank on color so we see that the darker the color the higher uh, the the um, the position i'm going to create a calculated field and the calculation will be uh, finished finished fin finished that's really difficult right last question mark and then i've cheated a bit so i'm going to say rank if the, uh, for each year, find the highest rank. So if there's 25 countries, 30 countries, find your highest one. And if the rank for that particular uh, country, then it's true. So if I say, okay, like this, and let's put this on, we can put it on size, for example, so that the true ones are the ones that we, we are uh, looking for. I'm just gonna keep only the true ones, make the size way larger and see that there's a lot of those dots over here for Norway. And if I click on the tooltip, 13 times Norway has ended last. And that is actually the worst in history ever. Uh, we are just one, one point or one <laughs> finish last above Germany, which also are pretty bad. Oh, no, sorry, not Germany. They only have seven. Um, so we are not that good, apparently. I can't understand why, because the music from Norway is beautiful. So the last thing I'm gonna show you, just gonna go back to this one. Uh, so this will be, um, uh, I guess this will be shared as well, but there's a lot of 
beautiful visualizations on Eurovision on Tableau Public. And the one that I just want to show you now, uh, because um, I, uh, there was somebody who visited Sweden and Norwegians don't like Sweden. So this is the last thing I'm going to show you. Who loves your country by Nir Smigla. And if I now select Norway, I can then see who has given us most points. So it's beautiful to see that Iceland and Sweden has given us most points, but see that Sweden has given Norway points 40 times, 4.8 points. And the most you can give is 12. Let's switch this around and look at those damn Swedes. They've given Denmark the most points and um, Norway uh, has received seven points from us over 42 times. They give us three points, we give them seven. So next year, I hope we don't give them anything. So that's the conclusion of my talk, which is probably way too long because I love to talk. Let's see if there's any questions. I'm going to stop share um, where, before we move over to, to Wilf. I see that you, uh, you have answered as well, Jared, right? When people have asked questions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, in that case, we will hand the floor over to Wilf, who has 20 tips in 20 minutes. So excited to see this. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, let me go there, share that. It's not very keen on sharing, hang on. It's probably because you're in the Salesforce tower, right? That'd be it. <laughs> I am literally floor 29 <laughs> in London. Uh, see if we can. Do this another way. You did make me an admin, Jared, didn't you? Yeah, we should. We need to check hmm. just to make sure. Uh, yeah, you have presenter mode. All the way down below the, the videos, you should have the chat DMs and the share screen button. Do you find oh, that? Yeah, one? No, I've got the share screen button and I'm clicking on the share button. Nothing is happening. Yes, it doesn't it doesn't pop up uh, because you should, uh, on my screen at least, it pops up. You can select the Chrome tab or whatever uh, browser you have, a window or an entire screen. Yeah, I'm trying to share entire screen and the share button is doing nothing. Uh, Let's see if we can find another way to do it. Uh, well, yeah. If uh, the presentation that you shared, oh, okay. now it works. Perfect. Do the I put that into presentation like. mode. Can we see that? Yep, you got it. Super. Okay, thank you very much. Um, right, so 20 tips in 20 minutes. I should be able to keep to time with a bit of luck. Um, a little bit about me just to start off with. Um, Professionally, I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry for somewhere over 30 years. I used to be a sales rep. I was in business intelligence uh, in the days of Windows 3.1, uh, and I've gone all the way through to Windows 11 in spreadsheet land from Lotus 1, 2, 3 through to all the different iterations of Excel. For the last 10 years, I've been a consultant um, in Salesforce Analytics using Tableau from versions 9 onwards uh, and have used prep pretty much from launch uh, to now. I'm currently on 23.3. Uh, I'm also chair of the UK British Business Intelligence Association. I run the Bobby Committee, uh, which is the awards committee. Um, and every year we like to give out awards recognizing excellence in business intelligence and healthcare excellence. 
Um, personally, I've been married 36 years. Uh, we love to dance, my wife and I. We do ballroom and Latin and Argentine tango. So just showing off a bit of tango actually in Argentina in that picture. Uh, I'm also a musician. Excuse me, well, uh, you're sharing the, um, uh, not the, um, uh, yeah, the other one, you're sharing the notes no, okay. first. So we didn't see the beautiful tango uh, picture. Oh dear, hang on, let me see if I can <laughs> share the right one. Let's put that into back into presentation mode. User group, let's share screen, window, PowerPoint slideshow. How's that? How's that? There we got it. There we go. Right, yes, um, that's, that's us. Argentine tango dancing in Argentina. Um, I'm a musician. I play saxophone, flute, uh, I do fishing, and I play games on my PS5 these days. Um, I'm also slightly obsessed with uh, Strictly Come Dancing, which is the UK version of Dancing with the Stars. So I have a Tableau public site which analyzes every single dance from the original series right up to now. Uh, so that's me. The objective, I hope, what I can do is maybe give each of you a couple of tips you've not come across before to just save you a little bit of time. Um, if I can save you five minutes a day each, that's probably two hours a month that you can go and do more exciting things than, uh, than get frustrated with your prep flows. So number one, logging in, um, particularly where you're using Tableau Cloud data and have to go through the MFA process. Don't know about you, but I find that super frustrating. Um, but there is a workaround to open a prep flow on desk in prep, flow, prep desktop um, without having to go through the MFA, which is to open prep, then click the open button, and then navigate to where your prep flow is and open it that way. When you open prep, the prep app itself, it will already be logged into your server, so you don't have to go through MFA. Um, if you want to open a second flow, just type Control N or file, go to File New, uh, and you can open another flow and go through the same process. It's way, way quicker than messing about with multi-factor authentication and everything else. Um, so, uh, if you first one tip is don't use all the little quick shortcuts in the big boxes, um, the recents, because you will then it will then force you to log in. So just use open um, or open a flow. Uh, if you do need to go to use multi-factor authentication, uh, not all authenticators are equal. The one I would recommend, if you have any choice, depending on your corporate policies, you may not be able to download them. But <clears throat> the Salesforce authenticator is definitely better than, say, the Microsoft one, because you don't have to keep typing numbers in. So typing in six numbers every time, real pain. With the Salesforce one, you can just tap uh, approve and it logs you in automatically. Um, PrEP doesn't allow it to use location services, but if you're logging into Tableau Cloud or if you're logging into Salesforce, the Salesforce authenticator will also use authentic um, location services on your phone, which means that if you log in regularly from the same place, it will then offer to automatically log you in if you're logging in from that your phone in that position. Um, it doesn't send the location to cloud, so it's just using your local data on the phone. So it is a good authenticator. If you've got to use an authenticator, uh, that will be the one I would go for. Oops, hit my wheel. Um, Tore already talked to this a little bit. Absolutely annotate every step in your prep flow as you go along, because you, the number of times I've gone back to a step in a prep flow and forgotten exactly what I did, and then had to read through all the little change steps to remind myself is too many to talk about. So I'm now very disciplined about logging things in. Um, as Tori said, the, the actual naming of the preps, of the clean steps and things is a bit limited in how many characters it will display. It, you can type more in, but they disappear. Um, but the little notes box underneath gives you a lot more scope. However, it's not a rich text box, so it doesn't wrap, it just wraps text. It won't allow you to put in line breaks or anything else. The trick I use is it's 22 characters wide, that text box. So if you type in 
a row of full stops, you can then put breaks into those notes, which makes them a lot more readable when you come back. So really keeps things clear, makes it easy to um, easy to read when you come back. Um, number four, Tableau Prep is a bit like a child with a brand new box of crayons. It just, everything changes color every time you put a different step, a new join or anything else. It makes it very unreadable and very difficult to follow different lines of the flow through the um, process. So I would always recommend a limited color palette. Now, entirely up to you what you use. My general rule of thumb is my main flow through the middle will be a sort of blue. Uh, any reference tables, so if I'm using tables to link as lookup tables, um, I would color them gray. <clears throat> and then any tables that are used uh, bringing in client data, I will color those green. So that looks something like that. As you can see, here's a prep flow where through the middle is my main flow leading to my output from my original input step. Um, that's all in blue. There's some client data coming in here in green and some more down here. Uh, and then there's a couple of reference tables uh, which come in here and join on. And you can see the main flow stays blue. If it's a lookup table or something, I've colored it gray. So it just makes it a lot more readable. It's a lot easier to follow where the main flow is within the overall scheme. Uh, and also to understand it quickly without necessarily having to read through the source data or anything else, what type of data you're joining in at each step. Um, that said, sometimes you may want to put in multiple colors. So uh, this is a flow I did, which is generating a whole series of outputs for a client um, who's uh, pan-European. And they want, to, from the single data source, they want an individual output for each country. So I've color coded each country so I can follow that through. So again, you use color coding wisely and specifically to make the overall flow more readable. Um, minimize your data from the start. So when you first pull in your data to the prep flow, immediately kill off as many as many uh, fields as you can that you're not going to need. So that once you're running the rest of the prep flow through, whenever it's iterating, when you're adding steps, it'll refresh much more quickly. Um, and it also means you're not pulling data through that you don't need uh, in the final output. Uh, and when you're doing that, I would always, within the um, import step, out one field at a time. Um, if you've worked with Salesforce at all, so if you've imported data directly from a Salesforce system, you will know there are myriad fields in every table that are, are absolutely not used by the particular client you're working with. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of fields in there that are um, designed as kind of reference fields, update fields, um, things for audit and that kind of thing. So you can click them all out. Now you can shift and click to take out blocks of data. Um, and if you absolutely know you're never going to need to use one of the fields within that block again, go ahead and do that. The number of times I've done that and then had to undo that step to bring one more field through uh, and then exclude all the other fields again. It's come to the point now where, frankly, it's worth my while doing 200 little X's to get rid of the fields before they ever come into the rest of the report. Because if I want one field back, I can just bring that field back by getting rid of that cross out. Um, doing it in the import step also means that the, the field doesn't disappear. So you can still search for it when you want, if you need to bring it back. Uh, and you can still then replace it within the flow using, uh, I'll find it with the search button. Um, now that said, there is one downside to doing that is if you're, if you replace the data source, all of those steps will be forgotten. Um, so something to bear in mind that if you do drag a new data source and you can just bring in a new data source from your source field, drop it on top of the original one to replace it, It'll you'll have to go through that step again. So that is probably the only downside to doing everything one at a time. Uh, nomenclature. Use really, really consistent nomenclature. We have um, 
been working recently, we've been moving all of our clients out of a SQL server that we held on premise into Azure and then pulling all their data through in cloud. And we've got 25 different clients in there. Whenever you're running prep flows, prep steps, be really consistent in terms of the uh, nomenclature you use. So, you know, use the client's initials, use the um, data type you're using make it really clear and always make them the same because when you want to search for them uh, within the cloud or within any of your data sources it'll be much much easier and you'll be really glad you did it in the future so um, consistent nomenclature absolutely a top tip from me um, and having said that the search tool within the data sources so this is searching for um, data within our cloud instance uh, it will search it's a fuzzy search so it will search for anything within the name so here i've just looked for azure live links and you can see it's brought out the, the very end of the uh, data source name where it's got azure live links so it's a really powerful search tool you can search for different bits of data but again coming back to the nomenclature stuff it, the more clarity you have in your original nomenclature the better easier you'll find that search um, laying out prep flows doesn't always have to be vertical so we've got a whole bunch of really titchy tiny steps here that essentially take the data from the uh, azure server and drop it into the tableau cloud server so that we can then build off all our prep flows from the end of that um, they're nearly all you know one step flows there's not much processing going on um, as Torre said, I've got a clean step in here because I like to look at the data before I generate the output. But because they're really short, I've just put them all on the grid pattern so I can see them all still on one screen and I'm not having to scroll up and down. So um, the grid pattern within PrEP uh, means that you can lay things out in all sorts of different ways. Um, groups. So as Torre said, you can group stuff and they are very nice and it does... Um, compress a prep flow and make things look a lot tidier um, but if you expand a, a group within a prep flow and it's got lots of other bits around the outside it will shove them all out of the way and then you'll have a right old job dragging them back in to make your prep flow look tidy I, and i this may just be me but i'm one of those people who does like everything to be nice and symmetrical and in a line and easy to see and follow and if stuff keeps getting popped out of the way i get a bit annoyed um, so Try and make sure you've finished anything you have to do within the group before you create the group. Um, on that note, if you need to change something within the group or add a data step or do anything else, ungroup it because otherwise prep has a tendency to crash on you. So uh, if you need to edit anything with happening within the group, just ungroup it first and then group it back up again afterwards. Um, something I never really looked at in until fairly recently was the little zoom box in the corner. Um, it floats just above all the data windows and things, but it's really neat and handy. So number one, you can change the zoom with the plus and minus buttons. So you can zoom out if you need to try and see the whole of your prep flow or zoom in to focus on particular bits. Um, the second one is that little box there. If you want, if you've moved your prep flow around and everything's got a bit out of whack and it's all drifting about on the screen, click the little box. It'll tidy everything back up into the corner and re reset it all for you. So that's a really cool little thing. And then thirdly, click on that percentage icon and it will re reset your zoom to 100%. So again, if you've been zooming in and out and flying around on your on your window. Those will help you to come back to uh, sanity, shall we say. Um, nulls in numeric data. Null, as you probably know, is a nightmare in numeric data because it propagates all over the place in calculations. Um, by default, Tableau will summarize any numeric fields. So it will show you a bar chart of the number of um, times that value is appearing. Uh, that makes it impossible to get rid of nulls. But if you change the setting to detail instead of summary, you can then 
find your null values and you can right click and change that for a zero if that's what you want to replace your nulls with. So assuming you want the nulls to continue to come through and you don't just want to get rid of them by filtering them out. Uh, it's a really easy way just to get rid of all the, any nulls in a numeric field. Uh, copying and pasting. You can copy and paste. Steps. So when you look at the little change window down the left hand side with all the little calculations and changes and things that you've made, you can copy and paste any of those steps to put them somewhere else in the flow. Um, really useful little tip. Um, you can only copy one at a time. Uh, so that's uh, maybe a bit of a downside but you can if you think oh, i've got all of these steps that actually i could move further up and which would make the flow more efficient you can copy and paste them upstream in your flow um, to to move them somewhere else uh, don't forget to delete the old ones or you'll probably potentially get errors in terms of uh, duplicating or removing fields but uh, really handy tip and i never realized it until quite recently that you could even do it um, Joining duplicate column, Tori pointed out the fact that if you have two fields with the same field name, Tableau will by default stick a dash one or a minus one on one of those field names or a minus two or a minus three. Um, and he, sh he showed quite very clearly, you can delete the one with the minus one. However, you may not always want to delete the minus one version, you may want to delete one of the others. So one of the things that we do a lot in our prep flows is that we will add prefixes to some of our reference fields, um, which is really easily done. You can do it, um, just use the rename fields color, um, option. Um, but we'll put a prefix on, then we do the join, then we've got absolute clarity in the next clean step what the source of those two columns was or those two fields so you know exactly which one you want to keep and which one you want to get rid of um, so you so you can add add the columns in add the prefixes in get rid of any fields you don't want and then the renamed columns can be used again um, in order to get get rid of any fields from that you don't want and using the wildcard it's really easy to find them um, the other nice thing about the renowned fields option is that um, it allows you to be selective about which fields you want to rename. So you can add your prefix, uh, you can automatically rename new fields, put your field in there. But these tick boxes allow you to deselect some of the fields. So if you don't want to add that prefix to one of your um, fields, you can clear that uh, and that field would automatically then just flow through into your data set and you won't then have to mess about renaming it or pulling it out afterwards. Um, parameters. Parameters are really useful. We have essentially in our big prep flow, we have this one massive source of data, which we then split off with different sales data, different market data, depending on which client we're feeding. Um, that's all managed using parameters within the system. So um, we have what we call a project deliverable ID that links to one of the reference tables, which says for this client, their project deliverable ID is 106. Uh, and that means they get these products, they get these um, outlets, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you can just use the parameter that then means I can use exactly the same prep flow because it's using the same source data and pretty much outputting the same end product with a different parameter for a different client. So it really speeds things up. Um, you will have to hard code parameters. So uh, within the data set, you if, if you get a new client, you need to add in a new project deliverable ID, you wouldn't will need that in, add it into your parameter list. So um, just to be aware, they're not dynamic as they you can't pull them off a field like you can in Tableau just yet. Um, but otherwise, really useful, really, really make life a lot simpler. Um, and also, when you if you're using prep conductor with a parameter, the um, conductor will remember the relevant parameter for each prep flow, so you won't have to tell it anything else. You just get it to run each of those flows sequentially as required. Um, don't trust it. So um, I guess this probably goes for everything AI right now, but Prep AI makes a bunch of assumptions um, about your data when you import it. 
just double check what it's doing uh, and how it's doing it. Sometimes it'll it'll see some null values on a date field and it'll assume it's a string field. When you you know, so make sure you look at that. Make sure you change those data types as you come in. Um, one of my little bugbears is if I did do a date trunk to month, um, instead of it being a date a date field by default, it's a date time field, and I don't understand why because I've got rid of all the time and day data. Anyway, that's just me having a moan. <coughs> I'm very good at having a moan. Um, but having said that, also let prep do the work. So have a look at these little recommendations that appear in the grey bar. It'll talk about different things about what you may want to get rid of, or whether you want to split values. It can be really useful. Um, but again, bear in mind, point 17, don't always trust it. Um, final or penultimate thought prep is never tidies its room so um, whenever you run a preview in tableau desktop as Toro did earlier his prep flow it will create a um, tableau extract uh, which will then be lying around in your my tableau prep, prep repository folder forever um, so just once a month or something like that go in there highlight everything and delete them all because otherwise it's purely going to clutter up your disk space um, and uh, it, so it's just worth keeping an eye on that um, and finally i do a lot of stuff i iterate stuff i change it i put publish it to the cloud i run the prep flow in the cloud uh, i reopen my desktop workbook which is linked to my cloud data source and for some reason it hasn't refreshed or it hasn't read the data yet now you can double click the data source uh force a refresh uh, and then go back and then sometimes you have to right click again and refresh within tableau desktop to get fields new fields to reappear um can be a bit of a pain and also it, it makes me nervous because suddenly every other data source sits there with a red exclamation mark because i haven't forced the refresh on it there is another way to force the refresh. When you publish a data source into Tableau Cloud, um, you can then go to the data source, create a new workbook from that data source. You don't actually have to do anything with the workbook, but just forcing the workbook to create will update whatever bits of the cloud need to be updated for your Tableau desktop to then read all the new fields. So um, it's a quick and easy way of forcing fields to appear when you're wondering where on earth they are and why they haven't appeared when you know you've run your prep flow and everything so was that 20 minutes it probably was just about 20 minutes and thank you very much i hope that's um been useful and i hope everybody's got a couple of things out of there that uh, maybe will help them tomorrow awesome see a couple of questions uh you have any favorite web scraper to include public data sources no no i must admit i don't and most of our stuff that we work with is in-house data so sorry right, do you have anything I tend to get um, colleagues who are better in the in the coding uh, world to, <laughs> to 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 help me, or I use uh, Chat GPT to try to build make some code. But uh, one one great place is, as I said before, go to Tableau Public if there's some, something you're interested in because the data is there. Uh, Matt's asking, what do you mean by not dynamic? If you mean the parameters, Matt. Um, yeah, you have to type each parameter into the parameter list within the prep flow. Um, whereas in Tableau now, you can tell it to refresh parameters on load and that sort of thing. That's not available at the moment in prep. Awesome. All right. Well, um, yeah, those are some great sessions, some great tips. Um, I'm learning new things all the time in prep. So it's always good to see how others are using it and, and finding little shortcuts and, and things to speed up the workflow. Um, like I said, the recording will be available shortly 
after we end the session. And um, yeah, make sure you keep up with the, the prep newsletter, uh, submit your sessions if you've got some other tips or use cases, uh, different interesting ways that you're using prep uh, and you wanna share those with the group, submit those to us so we can get you on the schedule. And yeah, we will do this again next time. But also uh, I see one more question for Wilf. Do you enforce discipline on the order of joins? Oh, that's a good question. Um, occasionally, when required, I suppose. It, it, it's a selective thing. And probably I would, if I'm joining in terms of I'm trying to cut down the amount of data that comes through, I'll use the reference table that reduces the data most at the, as the first join and then the smaller ones after that. So that I'm trying to minimize the amount of data at every step. Awesome. Well, uh, we will do this again next time. Thank you, everyone, for joining and for sticking with us through the whole thing. Yeah, thanks very much.